Hello and welcome to this video walkthrough. My name is Richard Smith, I'm a senior consultant with Microsoft Consulting Services in the UK and in this video we'll explore the User State Migration Toolkit 4.0. Here's what I'll be covering. We'll start with a discussion on installing User State Migration Toolkit 4.0 and then we'll take a look at some of the new and improved tools that have been added or superseded since the previous version. We'll then look at the automation of User State Migration Toolkit and some of the locations where the data stores can be placed. In the demonstration, I'll then show you some of the user migration scenarios. We'll start by running User State Migration Toolkit manually so that you can see the command line and the switches that are required. We'll then move on to customizing User State Migration Toolkit with the config.xml file. We'll then get into fully automated environments by using the Microsoft Deployment Toolkit 2010 for user migration and then into an enterprise class deployment scenario where we're using System Center Configuration Manager 2007 for user migration. Then I'll summarize and point you at additional resources that may be useful. So let's start by discussing how User State Migration Toolkit 4.0 is installed. USMT4 is now provided as part of the Windows Automated Installation Kit. That means that this kit is no longer provided as a separate download. To install User State Migration Toolkit, you need to download the Windows Automated Installation Kit for Windows 7 and install it onto a workstation or server. Once installed, the User State Migration Toolkit binaries will be available in the Tools folder within the Windows Automated Installation Kit. Once the Tools folder is available, you can use a number of methods to make USMT available to the source and destination machines you want to migrate. USMT needs to be run locally from the machine that's been migrated. You can achieve this by copying the binaries for USMT to the machines that are being migrated and running the command lines manually. Alternatively, you could use some basic automation techniques for copying the binaries from a network share and then running the command lines with a script such as a VB script or a batch file. User State Migration Toolkit 4 also supports being run from a Windows PE environment where you can migrate offline operating systems that are not running. Microsoft Deployment Toolkit 2010 provides additional support for migrating User State with the User State Migration Toolkit. Within MDT 2010, task sequence templates with additional tasks for running User State Migration Toolkit are provided. This is also true of System Center Configuration Manager 2007 that has inbuilt tasks that can be used in its task sequences for automating User State Migration. MDT 2010 and Config Manager 2007 can also be integrated together to give a full zero-touch implementation of User State Migration. So let's take a look at some of the new features as well as the command line changes that are provided in User State Migration Toolkit 4.0. In general, many of the new features and improvements are designed to speed up the way that User State Migration Toolkit works. These include support for the new hardlink migration stores, which are used in computer refresh scenarios only. Hardlink migration stores are stored locally on the computer that has been refreshed and they can migrate user accounts, files and settings in less time and using less disk space than traditional methods of backing up a data store. Version 4 also includes improved space estimation where the scan disk command will now accurately estimate the size of the migration store as well as any additional temporary space that's required during the creation of that migration store. This results in a massive reduction in the failures due to low disk space when scan state runs. Additionally in version 4 of User State Migration Toolkit, volume shadow copy is supported. This means that scan state commands can now make use of the volume shadow copy service to capture files that are locked for editing by other applications. It's also possible in this version to use the scan state commands to gather data from an offline Windows operating system. The scan state command can be used in the Windows PE environment and in addition USMT now supports migrations from previous installations of Windows contained in Windows.old directories. And USMT now integrates fully with Microsoft Deployment Toolkit 2010 and System Center Configuration Manager 2007 in order to move a user's digital identity as well as their applications and operating system settings in conjunction with the task sequences provided with these tools. To make use of these new features, additional command line switches were developed for the tools within User State Migration Toolkit. In scan state, forward slash list files enables you to generate a text file that lists all of the files that will be included in a migration, whilst the forward slash hard link switch enables the creation of a hard link migration store at a specific location. The forward slash offline winder and forward slash offline win old switches allow you to specify the offline windows directory or location where scan state will gather user state from. 
and the forward slash VSC switch enables you to use the volume shadow copy service to migrate files that are locked or in use by other applications. Load State also has a new switch for recovering user state from a hard link migration store and for automatically using the migration files that are supplied with USMT. USMT Utils also has additional command line options in USMT4. These include the forward slash EC switch, which is used to return a list of supported cryptographic algorithms on a current system, and the forward slash RD switch, which can be used for removing directories from all of the fixed drives. This command is useful for deleting hard link stores that cannot otherwise be deleted due to sharing locks. So let's move on and talk a little bit about automation and the data store locations. From an automation perspective, user state migration toolkit can be fully automated using scripting. This includes Visual Basic scripting and also batch files. The Microsoft Deployment Toolkit team have written a number of scripts that wrap around the user state migration tools for use in Microsoft Deployment Toolkit 2010, which transplant across to the System Center Configuration Manager environment when you integrate Microsoft Deployment Toolkit 2010 with Config Manager 2007 to provide a zero-touch implementation. These scripts have been developed to wrap around the user state migration toolkit command line tools and provide automation services such as where to store the user state and also the generation of XML based control files that the user state migration toolkit uses in its execution. The scripts will programmatically adjust the command lines that are run as part of the user state migration by adjusting based on variables that are input into the scripts. Part of that is to determine whether user state should be stored locally as a hard link migration store or whether remote data stores such as network shares or a Config Manager 2007 state migration point is required. It's also possible to use User State Migration Toolkit to back up state to flash drives and portable hard disks that are removable from the user's machine. So let's move across to my demo server where I can show you some of this in action. I've already installed the Windows Automated Installation Kit onto my server and on the E drive I've created a new folder called Migration. If I right click my migration folder, I can show you the properties and here you can see that I've shared my folder as migration. This is where I'm going to place the USMT binaries for sharing out across the machines that I want to migrate. In the migration folder, I've added a USMT folder and in here I've copied the USMT binaries for x86 and x64 platforms. To do this, I went to the install location where the Windows Automated Installation Kit was installed when I ran through the setup program. This is typically program files in a folder called Windows AIK. And in the tools directory, you'll find the USMT folder with the binaries in for the user state migration toolkit version 4.0. I copied these folders from here and pasted them into my USMT folder within my migration shared folder. And here you can see load state, scan state and USMT utils that are part of the x86 platform. If I reorder the files in this folder by type, I can show you the XML control files that are used for the migration process. These are the migapp.xml, migdocs.xml and miguser.xml files that are located in the folder with scan state and load state. Each of these files contains migration rules that control which components are migrated and where they're migrated to on a destination computer. The first file, migapp.xml, is specified with both scan state and load state commands to migrate application settings to computers running Windows Vista or Windows 7. Migapps.xml comes with a number of common applications already configured. Migdogs.xml is considerably smaller than the other control files. This control file makes use of a new feature within User State Migration Toolkit 4.0, that is the Generate Doc Patterns Helper function. This helper function finds user data that resides on the root of any drive in the user system, as well as user data that resides in the user's directory. This control file can be used to automatically generate a list of user data that needs to be migrated without knowing specifically what or where these files are. This control file can be modified to add additional patterns that the generate doc patterns helper function looks for. There's an example included within the file. This control file should not be used in conjunction with the miguser.xml file that we'll look at next. The miguser.xml file is used to specify which user folders, files and file types are migrated to the new system. This control file lists specific locations and specific files that it looks for as part of the migration process. These are broken into components and you can add your own components to this file or generate custom XML files that you can use for your specific migration needs. 
Each component within the file has a comment to tell you what it's migrating, so you can use the components that are supplied as examples for your own migration needs. Another task that I carried out when I created the migration share was to create a batch file called USMT underscore migration. This automates some of the USMT tasks that I want to carry out. This is a very simple script that will first map a network drive to my shared location on the server and then copy down the USMT binaries. This will be copied to the C colon backslash windows backslash USMT folder on the local machine. We'll then change directory to the x86 folder within that directory that's just been created and run scan state with a number of command line switches. We'll look at these command line switches in more detail when we run the command later on the client machine. The thing I'll point out at this point is we'll be doing a hard link data migration from an offline directory that's generated by the Windows 7 setup program. This windows.old directory will be created automatically by the Windows setup program when it installs onto a machine that has an existing Windows operating system installed. Other options in my command line detail where the log files are going to be placed when the scan state function runs. After scan state has created my hard link store, I'm then going to use load state against that store to import the user state back into the Windows 7 operating system, and then I'm going to remove the map network drive that was created at the beginning of the script. So let's move across now to the Windows client machine and see this script in action. So here is my Windows XP workstation. This is a Service Pack 3 machine, and I'm currently logged on as a local user of this particular computer. I'm using it as my daily work machine, so I have a number of documents stored on my desktop. These include presentations, video file, a zip file, and a number of documents, websites, and pictures, all stored directly onto my desktop. If I open the Start menu and go to My Documents, you'll see I have a number of subfolders that I've generated for storing documents and file types. If I go back to the Start menu and open My Pictures, you'll see I have a number of personal pictures that I have in this folder. Typically, an important part of a user's profile is their Internet Explorer favorites list. These tend to be built up over a long period of time. Here, if I open Internet Explorer 6 and open my favorites folder, you can see my extensive list of favorites that I wouldn't want to lose. So you can see my user state is made up of a number of important pieces of information. Let's go to my computer and onto the C drive and take a look in documents and settings. Here I can take a look at the properties of my profile folder. It's just over two gigabytes in size currently and has 1,283 files and 196 folders. It's this state, as well as operating system and application settings, that I want to migrate into Windows 7. So let's go ahead and install Windows 7. At this point, I haven't backed up any user state. I'm going to run the Windows 7 setup program from a share on my server. So I'm going to click Setup to run the installation and choose Install Now to kick off the Windows 7 setup program. After temporary files have been copied from the server, the setup program will start. I first get the choice of going online to see if there are any important updates that setup may need as part of the installation. I'm going to choose at this time not to, but I need to accept the licensing agreement to move on. I then have the option of doing an upgrade or a complete clean install. Windows XP to Windows 7 upgrades are not supported by setup, so the only option that can be chosen on this page is custom. This starts a clean installation of Windows 7. However, if you choose to install Windows 7 into a partition that has an existing operating system already installed, then an information box will inform you that the old version of Windows will be backed up into a folder called Windows.old. This effectively means that all data from the current drive will be backed up into this location. This includes the current Windows installation, all of the supporting program files, and the user data. So let's jump ahead to the point where the Windows setup program has completed and Windows 7 has been installed onto my machine. I've logged on as a local user again called Richard Smith, and if I take a look in the Documents folder, you can see I don't have any of the documents that I had when Windows XP was running on this machine, and my Pictures folder is also empty. If I take a look at the new location in Windows 7 for storing user profiles, that's the Users directory on the C drive, and take a look at the properties of my user profile, it's around about 26 megabytes. If you remember in Windows XP, my profile was around about 2.14 gigabytes. So where's all my data gone? Well, as we were informed by the Windows setup program at the start of the installation, it's placed our previous install of Windows XP into a Windows.old directory. Here you can see the Windows folder, and of course the Documents and Settings folder, with my profile still intact. Here's my favorites. And if I move through my profile, I can see my documents, 
including my pictures and my music and all of the folders that made up my original profile under Windows XP. This also included the folder that represented my desktop in Windows XP, which still includes all of the data that I saved to the desktop and all of the shortcuts that I created. I'm now going to migrate that information into my Windows 7 profile using User State Migration Toolkit. To carry out the tasks I require to migrate my data, I've copied down the USMT underscore migration batch file from the server. If you remember from earlier, this will carry out a number of tasks including copying down the user state migration toolkit binaries and running scan state and load state to migrate the data from the windows.old directory that was created by the Windows 7 setup program. So I'm going to run the migration in real time during the video so you can see the speed of approximately 2 gig of data being migrated back to Windows 7. I've right clicked the batch file and choose run as administrator and accepted the user account control prompt. I'm just going to move the command prompt out of the way so that I can show you the commands that are being run. The batch file has mapped the drive and is copying down the binaries for USMT. We're then going to run scanstate.exe to tell scanstate to create a local store called HL Store on the C drive. I'm going to set the verbose level to 13, which enables verbose status and debugger output. And then I'm going to use the forward slash O switch to overwrite any existing data that might be in the migration store, followed by the forward slash C switch, which is continued to run even if there's a non fatal error. We'll use the forward slash hard link to enable a hard link migration store that will be in the C colon backslash HL store location. I'm also using the forward slash no compress switch which turns off compression. Compression is turned on by default in USMT, but compression can't be used with the hard link switch. I'm then telling ScanState to create hard links to any EFS files that it finds instead of copying them before using the forward slash I switch to specify the control files that I want to use for this migration, both the migapp.xml and the migdocs.xml that are in the same folder as the ScanState.exe command line tool. I'm then going to tell ScanState where the Windows directory directory is within the windows.old folder that contains my state, followed by the logging options for creating the scanstate.log file. Finally, the forward slash progress switch to create a progress log file in the same location. Once scanstate has run to create the store, we'll use load state commands to then implement the store into the Windows 7 environment. This includes running loadstate.exe against the C colon backslash HL store that was generated by scanstate. We'll again use the forward slash C switch to continue if there are non fatal errors, and the forward slash LAC switch, which will create accounts that don't exist. These are non domain local accounts that will be regenerated. We use the hard link switch to inform loadstate that it's recovering from a hard link based store, and the no compress switch because we're using the hard link switch. In the command window, you can see the first of the profiles being restored back into the Windows 7 environment. This is the Richard Smith profile that I was using under Windows XP. As the data is migrated back into my new Windows 7 environment, manifest files within User State Migration Toolkit detail where the data needs to be put in relation to the new operating system folders that now exist. As you can see, the icons start to appear on my desktop because I'm currently logged in with a profile that's been migrated. If you are logged onto a machine while load state runs, it's current recommended practice that you log out and log back in again so that the changes can be implemented. So I've logged out and logged back in again and now I can validate the migration process. On my desktop are all the files and shortcuts that I had in my Windows XP environment. And if I go into the documents location within Windows 7, I'll see that all my folders and files have been migrated across from the Windows XP environment. Again, if I go into the new pictures library within Windows 7, all of my pictures have been placed in the correct location, migrated from Windows XP. Finally, I can validate that my Internet Explorer favorites have migrated across into the Windows 7 environment by starting Internet Explorer 8 and hitting the favorites button. Here you can see all of my favorites listed as they've been migrated from the Windows.old directory and out of the Windows XP environment and into the correct location within Windows 7. Now that I've validated that migration was successful and I have all of my data, I now need to clean up the folders that we use for the migration process. That's the windows.old directory that contains a previous version of the operating system that's currently just over 5 gigabytes in size. I also need to clean the HL store folder, which was the folder generated by ScanState as a hard link data store. This is currently reporting to be 2.19 gigabytes. It's current recommended practice to remove these folders as quickly as possible after migration so that you don't get inconsistencies with data size reporting. 
To remove the windows.old directory, go to the C drive and right click and choose properties. From here, we can use the disk cleanup button. Once the disk has been initially scanned for files that can be removed, you'll be given a second option to clean up system files from the disk cleanup dialog. Once a second scan has taken place, there should be an option on the list to remove previous Windows installations, which you can tick the tick box for. This is the current Windows.old directory at 4.99 GB. When you click OK, the Windows.old directory will be cleanly removed from the system. You should always use this process to remove the Windows.old directory. If we go back to the C drive now, you can see Windows.old has been removed and the space has been returned to the file system. To remove the HL store folder, we need to go into the Windows directory and down to the USMT folder that we created earlier. In each platform specific folder, you'll find usmtutils.exe. This command line tool can be used for removing data stores, specifically hard link stores that may be locked through file sharing. So I'm going to go ahead and start a command prompt so that I can use the usmtutils tool to remove the directory. All command prompts that we run USMT tasks from need to be run as administrator. This is because the tools need administrative access to the system and the drives and the file system. So we're going to run usmtutils.exe with the forward slash rd switch against c colon backslash hl store to cleanly remove the folder from the system. You can see that usmtutils asks for confirmation before it proceeds and I click y to answer yes. You can see that USMT Utils has returned a result code of 2. This means the machine needs to be rebooted to remove all of the HL Store directory fully. So I'll initiate a reboot from the start menu and we'll pick it up on the other side of the reboot and log back in to see if the HL Store has been removed cleanly. Once the machine is rebooted, I've logged back in as my user account, and if we go to the C drive and take a look, we should find that the HL store that was used for the migration process has been removed cleanly, and the space has been returned to the file system. So now I've shown you a basic migration, let's switch back to the Windows XP machine, so I can show you how to set up a config.xml file. As you saw in the previous migration, the default XML files that ship with USMT are quite comprehensive. If you're satisfied with the default migration behavior, but you want to exclude certain components, then you can create a config.xml file. Here I've opened a command prompt, and I'm running scan state with the forward slash I switches to specify the XML files I want to use, and the forward slash gen config switch, which will create a config.xml file in the USMT x86 folder. This scans the machine that I'm currently running on for everything that would be migrated as part of a migration if it was run currently. This includes all of the applications, user files, user folders, and user state. If we then go into the USMT folder that's in my Windows directory and go into the x86 folder, I'll find the config.xml that was just generated. And if I edit it, you can see it's a much simpler file to deal with than the XML files that I showed you earlier. This file now lists all of the components that would be migrated using the XML files that we specified on the command line with the forward slash I switch, and we can change the migrate equals yes to migrate equals no for all the components that we don't want to migrate. The config.xml file doesn't contain any migration rules. It only contains a list of operating system components, applications, and user documents that can be migrated, as well as user profile policy and error control policy. At the bottom of the file, you can see where the error control policy can be input, as well as the hard link store control policy and the domain to user mapping examples. Once you've generated the config.xml file and configured it to your specification, you can then use it on the command line with scan state to tell it what not to migrate as part of the migration process. To do this, you launch a command prompt as administrator and then use the scan state command line to input what you want scan state to do. Here you can see the scan state command line that I ran in the previous demonstration, which creates the hard link store on the root of the C drive. You can see the switches that were used for that particular command, but now I've added the forward slash config switch that points to the config.xml file that's in the same directory as scan state. Generating a config.xml file and configuring it is much easier than editing the MIG app and MIG docs files directly. So let's switch back to the server so I can show you some more automated techniques of using user state migration toolkit. On this server I have Microsoft Deployment Toolkit 2010 installed. I'm going to start the deployment workbench. 
I've already generated a deployment share within the workbench and you can see the representation of it here. If I expand it out you can see all the folders that make up the share, including the task sequence folder, and I've already created a Windows XP to Windows 7 migration task sequence. I did this by right clicking task sequences and choosing new task sequence. Give my task sequence an ID and a name and I'm then able to select a template. MDT 2010 ships with a number of task sequence templates that you can use, but the standard client task sequence has a number of tasks in it for dealing with user state migration. The standard client task sequence covers a number of scenarios including refresh, replace and new computer. Here you can see on the general page that I've given my task sequence ID the name Win7 Migrate. If you go to the task sequence tab you can see the task sequence template fully. Each group within the task sequence carries out specific tasks in the build process. These tasks are controlled by logic placed on either the group or the individual task itself. It's the state capture tasks that we're interested in looking at at this point because this has the tasks for controlling the user state migration toolkit. Here we have a folder called non-upgrade and if we take a look at the options it has some task sequence variables set upon it. Here it has a deployment type not equaling upgrade, which means if the deployment type is not seen to be an upgrade, these tasks will run. The first thing that happens is a script is run to generate an application XML file. This is a script written by the MDT team. The script's job is to automatically generate an XML file that can be used with ScanState for migrating the applications that are found on the machine. Then we have ZTI user state. This script determines if USMT 3 or 4 is required and can also determine the location of the data store, either local or remote. Then we have another script called ZTI Groups, which captures group information from the local machine. All of these scripts are supplied with Microsoft Deployment Toolkit 2010 and are placed in the deployment share that you generate with the deployment workbench. Here's the folder that represents my deployment share and inside are all the folders that you see within the deployment workbench. MDT scripts are stored in the scripts folder, and in here are all the scripts responsible for the deployment process, including those responsible for using user state migration toolkit. As we move down through the list of scripts, we should be able to find the ZTI app XML gen script. This script's responsible for generating XML files that look at the applications that are installed on a machine and then build associations to documents that those applications may use. This XML file is then passed to ScanState and LoadState as a way of automating the process of looking what applications are installed on the machine and migrating the data types that are associated with those applications. Here you can see the script determining whether USMT3 or USMT4 is used, and as we move down through the script, you can see the logic that's used to write the XML file. As we move back up through the script list, we shall be able to find the ZTI user state script. This script is a main wrapper script for user state migration toolkit, and is used to determine the command lines that will be used with load state and scan state. As we move through the script you'll see entries that determine what happens at certain logic points based on the deployment that's taking place. The script will also determine whether USMT3 or USMT4 is required. Logic in the script confirms the installation of these toolkits and also which toolkit is used based on the operating system being migrated from and to. As we move down through the script you can see the logic responsible for dealing with the base command line options. These deal with the files that are input onto the command line as well as the command line switches themselves. As we move further down you can see the input lines for USMT4. USMT command lines are built automatically based on variables that are used throughout the deployment process. Here in the code you can see different command line options being used based on variables that are coming in during the deployment. So back in the task sequence in the state capture phase, we've seen how there are tasks that run MDT scripts that automate the scan state process. In the state restore phase, there are tasks that automatically run scripts that run the load state process. These are exactly the same scripts that we used in the state capture phase, except with a different command line switch to restore instead of capture. This tells the logic in the script to automate the process of running load state instead of scan state. And again, we run ZTI groups with a restore to restore the groups that we captured earlier in the state capture phase. In MDT 2010, the task sequence is the main engine, but as we've seen, that task sequence and the scripts that it runs relies on variables that are placed on the deployment process.
These variables can be gathered at build time from the user's machine or input via a rules file. This rules file is called customsettings.ini and is accessible through the rules tab on the properties of the deployment share. Here you can add variables that you use at deployment time that are consumed by the task sequence or the scripts that the task sequence runs. Here you can see I'm inputting some variables for the scan state args and the load state args. These variables will be consumed by the MDT scripts when they create the load state and scan state command lines. Within this file I've also added additional variables that will fully automate the installation of Windows 7 onto a Windows XP machine. I've turned off all of the wizards that would normally prompt a user for input and I've set the variable to determine this will be a refresh scenario. I've then set the variables that will join the domain with the relevant username and password that's required for domain join. And I've then set the location where I want user data to be stored. I've set user data location to auto so the scripts will determine whether to save state locally or upload it to a network share that I've specified in this variable into a folder named after the computer where the task sequence is running. I've also specified the variables for determining if the machine is fully backed up using image X before the machine is rebuilt with Windows 7. As we move down the custom settings.ini file, you can see the variables that I've added to skip the task sequence wizard and specify that the Win7 migrate task sequence should be used. And also I'm going to skip the computer name wizard and specify that the computer name will be percentage computer name percentage variable so the machine gets the same name that it had previously. Here I've specified language, locale and keyboard settings to set everything to GB and also the time zone to GMT standard time. And finally I've specified the credentials that are used to connect back to the distribution share so the MDT deployment process can run on a client machine. When MDT has been updated you need to right click the deployment share and choose update deployment share to ensure that all the changes are passed down to the control files that MDT uses to control the task sequence, the scripts and the variables. So let me switch back to my Windows XP workstation so that I can show you how the MDT 2010 task sequence takes care of migrating and building this Windows XP machine to Windows 7. So as before my computer has a range of user state that needs to be migrated. So I'm going to start a command prompt and run it as administrator. And I'm going to start the MDT task sequence by running the MDT process called LightTouch. This is a VB script in the scripts directory on the deployment share that's on my server. LightTouch.VBS starts the MDT build process and calls the task sequence. You'll see a small flash as the wizard starts but doesn't display anything and then the task sequence will start. The first tasks within the task sequence are around gathering information from the local machine and validating that everything is ok to continue building Windows 7. The state capture groups will then run to automate the use of scan state to capture user state and to capture local groups. Windows PE is then applied to the local hard disk and the boot environment is programmatically changed so that Windows PE will boot when the machine is restarted. Once in the Windows PE environment the task sequence will continue from where it left off. However variables that I set in the custom settings.ini file inform the task sequence that this is a refresh scenario and logic in the task sequence is now cleaning the drive as opposed to wiping it and repartitioning the drive thus saving the data that may be stored in a hard link migration store on the hard disk. So let's move ahead to the point where the Windows 7 operating system has been installed and the task sequence is running the final tasks in the task sequence. These tasks are responsible for restoring user state and groups back to the machine that were captured in the state capture phase of the task sequence earlier. Once a task sequence is finished we get a deployment summary that informs us of any issues or errors that were caused during the deployment process. The MDT build process is always run in the context of the local administrator so now the build process is finished I need to log off as that account and log on with an account that has some user state that's been migrated. So here I'm going to log on to the domain with my domain credentials. I'm going to log in as Richard Smith with my password onto my domain account. And here you can see that all of my data has been migrated as part of the process. All of my icons are back on the desktop. I can see the files that I saved on the desktop earlier. All my files and folders have been moved across to the document library location. And in my pictures library, I can see the pictures that were available before. 
I can go directly to my profile by clicking on my name in the top of the start menu. If I take a look in the favorites folder, all of my favorites from Internet Explorer 6 have been transferred across into the Windows 7 environment by MDT. So let's switch across to my System Center Configuration Manager server, where I'll show you how to integrate MDT 2010 and Config Manager to achieve a similar approach on an enterprise scale. System Center Configuration Manager has a similar concept as MDT 2010 in that it has task sequences that control the installation process. MDT 2010 can be integrated into System Center Configuration Manager and provide task sequence templates that fully automate the deployment and migration process. The task sequence templates that are provided include the client task sequence that automates the process of managing user state migration and rebuilding and refreshing machines. The Create Microsoft Deployment Task Sequence Wizard not only allows you to create a task sequence based on a template, but also all of the packages that are required in Config Manager to support that task sequence. These include porting across elements of the Microsoft Deployment Toolkit environment, including the deployment share and all of the deployment scripts that are used. This means that the variables and scripts that are used in the MDT environment can be used in a Config Manager task sequence environment too by creating the packages with this wizard. Once you've finished using the wizard to create the packages and set the template, the template's available within the task sequences node in Config Manager. And if we right click and choose Edit, you can see all of the pre-configured tasks in this task sequence that MDT has generated. These include tasks for using various packages that were generated by the wizard, including the toolkit package, which makes the scripts available from MDT. The task sequence has a state capture group, again with logic placed on it to determine when it runs. In this case, it will run only if we're not in Windows PE. Within the state capture group are tasks that run various scripts from the MDT environment. The integration with System Center Configuration Manager and MDT 2010 makes all the MDT scripts available within the task sequence in System Center Configuration Manager. These include the scripts for capturing groups and automating user state, capture and restore. There are also tasks that are native to the Config Manager 2007 task sequence. For example, there's a Capture Network Settings task, which determines how domain and workgroup membership are captured and how network adapter configuration is migrated. The Determine Local or Remote User State task is responsible for running the MDT script ZTI User State. This automates the use of scan state to determine whether the user state should be stored locally or we need to request a state store from System Center Configuration Manager, which is the next task in the list. State storage locations can be requested from the Config Manager environment. This particular request to state store task has logic placed upon it, which says if USMT local variable is not equal to true, then we will request a state store. This means we don't want the state to be stored locally, so we have to uplift it to the server. On the next task, we capture the user state using the USMT package that was created by the wizard. This task is an inbuilt config manager task and has its own interface. Within it, we can determine config.xml files and additional XML files that we want to use for the migration, or we can use the standard profiles and the standard options. We can also determine what happens with encrypted files, whether to continue on errors or whether to enable verbose logging. But as you now know, these tick boxes are just turning on command lines within scan state and load state. Towards the end of the task sequence is the state restore group that has a number of tasks for restoring state back to the user's machine. These include restoring groups by running the ZTI group script from the MDT environment, as well as requesting the state store so that we can recover state back from the network. We then use the restore user state task, which is an inbuilt config manager native task to restore all captured user profiles with standard options or customize how the user profiles are restored. We can also choose to restore local computer user profiles and set the password that those profiles will have. For security reasons, local account passwords cannot be migrated, so you can set a password here that's assigned to those accounts when they're migrated into the new environment. If state has been stored locally on the user's machine, at the end of the process, an MDT script called ZTI Move State Store will copy the state store to the local Windows backslash temp folder on the user's machine as a backup. Right at the end of the task sequence is a group of tasks to deal with error control. 
If the user state migration tasks don't succeed, this flag will be set within the task sequence and it will be equal to false. This means the tasks in this group will fire. We'll start by using the toolkit package and gathering information about the machine. Then we'll make sure that the user state is moved to C colon backslash windows backslash temp as a backup and then we'll copy the logs off to a remote location if it's been set within the environment. This at least means that the user state is recoverable using some of the manual techniques that I showed you in the very first demonstration in this presentation. It also means that the logs are available for us to be able to troubleshoot the situation. One of the key abilities of System Center Configuration Manager is to be able to target deployments at machines. Here I have a collection called All Windows XP Systems and I'm going to go into its properties and see what's been advertised to it. Here I can see the task sequence I've just shown you has been advertised to All Windows XP Systems. This is probably not a good idea in a production environment but as my collection only has one machine in it, it's going to be fine for demonstration purposes. So let's switch across back to my Windows XP machine to see the task sequence run. So here we are back in Windows XP with all of my data still needing to be migrated and Windows 7 needing to be installed. I'm logged on with a domain user account and also the difference between this and the previous demonstrations is that the computer is a member of the domain, the lab.build.local domain. Another difference between this machine and the previous machines that I've demonstrated to you is that if I go into Control Panel, you'll see that the System Center Configuration Manager client has been installed onto this machine and that this machine is a member of the Lab SMS site. On the Actions tab, I can use the Machine Policy Retrieval and Evaluation cycle to kick off anything that's been advertised to this machine. You can see in the bottom right hand corner that there's a program countdown status. This is for my Windows 7 deployment task sequence that was a mandatory assignment. I can click run though to start the task sequence now and not have to wait for the countdown. The task sequence will start and it will start by using the toolkit package which allows us access to the MDT environment. After that we gather information about the machine and then start running the scripts for user state migration including the MDT script that determines whether local or remote user state is required. In this case we'll determine that user state can be stored locally on the user's machine as a hard link migration store. Once the state location has been determined, the tasks for capturing the user state will run. Once the user state capture tasks have completed, the same process continues that happened in the MDT environment. A Windows PE environment is downloaded to the machine and the boot environment is adapted to boot into the Windows PE to carry on the task sequence and build Windows 7. So let's jump forward to where the machine has been built and we're ready to log back on. I'm going to log in as my domain account onto my new Windows 7 machine. If USMTs run correctly, I should see my files and folders on the desktop, I should see my documents and folders within my documents libraries, and my pictures within the pictures library on Windows 7. I should also be able to confirm that if I go into Internet Explorer 8 and open up my favorites, that my favorites have in fact been migrated across by the System Center Configuration Manager task sequence as part of state migration. So that's good if USMT carries out the tasks of migrating my system. What happens if I log in and there's no icons on the desktop and there's no documents in my document store? So you saw at the end of the task sequence there were a number of tasks that would fire should a failure occur. One of those tasks was to move the state store to the Windows backslash temp folder. That was an MDT based script. Here you can see the user state migration state store in the temp folder. If we take a look at the properties of the folder that's inside the state store, you'll see that it's about 2.19 gigabytes, which was the size of my profile. If I drill down further through the folder structure, you can see all of the profile folders from this machine that were migrated, both the local profiles and the domain profiles are all in this location. When a config manager task sequence runs, after it's completed, its logs are placed in the Windows System32 CCM logs folder. This location is also used to store logs from the MDT environment, including the very useful bdd.log. This bdd.log file lists all of the tasks that were carried out during the task sequence process and is a good starting point to determine why user state migration didn't work correctly. Here we can see the task sequence entry for moving the state store to the Windows backslash temp backslash state store folder. 
Also stored within this location are the USMT log files. These include the loadState.log file and the loadStateProgress.log file, as well as the ScanState and ScanStateProgress log files. These are ideal starting points for determining what went wrong with the USMT process. Open on the screen now is the loadState.log file, which lists all of the issues that were found during the loadState process. Here we can see that there was an issue with a device that was only open for read access. Access was denied and therefore this caused an error with the user state migration process. We can now go back and look at what caused this issue and fix it before we run user state migration again. So to summarize, we can use user state migration toolkit 4.0 on individual computers by manually running scan state and load state, or automatically from within Microsoft Deployment Toolkit 2010, or at an enterprise level, automatically from within Config Manager 2007, which allows us to target deployment to specific machines using the System Center Configuration Manager client. From a storage perspective, we can use local data stores such as hard link migration stores to keep the files locally on the machine and eliminate the time and effort that it takes to copy them up to the network and then back down again when the machine has been rebuilt. For remote data stores, we can use network shares or System Center Configuration Manager 2007 state migration points. It's also possible to use removable stores with USMT, such as flash drives and portable hard disks, to bring the storage closer to the user's machine. That completes this presentation. On the screen now is a list of resources that you may find useful as you look for additional information around Windows 7 deployment. I hope you found this presentation useful. Thanks for watching.